Hi, my name is Sahara Rose. I'm the best-selling author of The Idiot's Guide to Ayurveda and host of the Highest Self podcast. And I'm really passionate about merging ancient Ayurvedic wisdom with modern nutritional science and plant-based recipes. I think Chinese medicine is a really good entry po point to people because like acupuncture is so common and there's more Chinese medicine places, but most people don't know Chinese medicine actually originated from Ayurvedic wisdom. So Ayurveda is the world's oldest health system. It originated in ancient India 5,000 years ago, but was even passed down orally 2,000 years before that. So it's, it's super old. Um, and it's based off of the same tenets that our, our bodies are a reflection of nature and we're comprised of five elements, just like Chinese medicine has five elements. However, the elements are a little different. So in Ayurveda, they're air, ether, which is space, earth, fire, and water. So we're all a combination of all five, but we have varying amounts. And they take these five elements and they put them into three doshas. So the word dosha literally means energy, or I like to just call it your mind body type. So you have vata, which is, I like to just call it air energy. It's comprised of air and space, but it's really like airy, cold, dry. We can talk more about what that, what that means, but just think air. Then there's pitta, which is more fiery. It's actually comprised of fire and water, but it's really strong, passionate, acidic, in the mind, in the body. It's just a very powerful energy. And then there's kapha, and kapha is really like earthy. It's grounded, it's rooted, um, and in the body that can sometimes lead to heaviness as well as in the mind. Ayurveda has something called Dinacharya as well, which is your daily practice. So um, one of my favorite ones to start with that I recommend to everyone is tongue scraping. So tongue scraping is literally, you can buy either a tongue scraper or just use a spoon and it's scraping off the white stuff that accumulates on your tongue because in, in Ayurveda it's called ama and toxins. So if you have a lot of white stuff in your tongue, like when you wake up in the morning, it's a sign that there's a lot of like toxicity built up in your system. Um, another one is dry brushing. So dry brushing is literally just taking a dry loofah and, and brushing your skin like the same way you would in a shower, but dry. And the reason is because it stimulates your lymphatic system, but it also eliminates all of the dead skin cells that are on the surface of your skin because your skin is your largest organ. And if you have like all of this, these dead skin cells, you're not actually breathing and breathing in new prana, new life force. So um, there are so many, I could keep going for days, but that one's really good. Oil pulling is another amazing one, which is sort of like Ayurvedic mouthwash. It's literally just taking a scoop of oil in your mouth and swishing around your mouth from anywhere from three up to 20 minutes. You don't have to do 20 minutes. I think a lot of people have heard of oil pulling and like 20 minutes of oil in my mouth, but all you do is just put it in your mouth, swish it around. You can get ready. You can do whatever it is, um, and then spit it out. And it's really important when you spit it out to cleanse your mouth with some warm water because in your mouth is going to be all of the toxicities that you've spit and you'll notice the oil that you spit out is actually like white and foamy and that's literally the toxins that you're pulling from your system and the reason they recommend doing oil instead of mouthwash is because mouthwash like listerine or other antibacterial mouthwashes they kill all bacteria good and bad just like an antibiotic does but if you kill all bacteria then the bad bacteria is more likely to grow and then that's gonna create like more, that's why Listerine and all these things are addictive. Once you start using it, you need to keep using it. But with oil, it gently removes the bad bacteria without the good bacteria. It's, it's more gentle, it takes longer, but if you practice it every day, then you're not gonna need anything else. In Ayurveda, it's really based off of that there's no one diet for everyone and there's not even one diet for you because everyone's different and we're also always changing. So just like what you ate in your 20s is going to be different than when you ate in your 30s, 40s. What you eat when you're menstruating is different when you're not menstruating. So it's really based off of the doshas and assessing where you are right now. So let's say you're feeling more vata, more windy. What that really means is they have a lot of air accumulation in their system, gas, bloating, constipation. So what they need is something that's more grounding, more warming, and that's going to help build up their digestive fire. Because the reason that you're so bloated in air is because you're not actually breaking down your foods. So someone like that would need more cooked foods, more spices, more root vegetables. In Ayurveda, we take on the energy of everything that we eat. So when we eat root vegetables, literally grown under the earth, we take on those grounding properties and that makes us feel more grounded in every aspect of our lives. Another thing with vata is it's a lot of movement even in the mind. So vata people tend to feel more anxious, more insomnia. So changing their diet, having the more root vegetables and grounded foods will also feel make them feel more grounded mentally.
if someone's more pitta, they have a lot of fire in their system. So what that means is their digestive fire is burning too strong. So they may feel really acidic. They might feel like they're experiencing heartburn. It's literally heat in their body. If you're someone that gets hot all the time, you need the AC on at night, you have a lot of pitta in your system. So what you need to counterbalance that is more cooling foods, more coconut water and leafy greens and mint leaves and things like that. It doesn't have to be raw, it could still be cooked, but you want it to be really light. So think of foods that grow in the summertime. It's like, you know, little springy vegetables and um, berries and things like that. That's exactly what you need when you feel too hot. So it's really like looking at what nature provides us with at that season. And most of the time it's like what our bodies need. Then lastly, there's kapha. So kapha is really grounding. What happens if you feel really grounded in your body is you gain weight easily because your body is taking everything that you put into it and it's holding onto it more than it should be, which is why you or you might have a friend that tends to just gain weight really easily. They just like look at someone else's fries and they're gaining weight. And it's because of that kapha imbalance. So what you need to juxtapose that, that grounding and heaviness is something that's more stimulating. So, um, different spices like turmeric and cayenne pepper. That's why, you know, drinking cayenne pepper lemonade was so popular for so long because the cayenne pepper literally speeds up your metabolism. So Ayurveda would say add tons of spices to your food, make sure it's light, not too heavy. You don't want any dairy. You don't want lots of carby things. So it's gonna promote the sweetness and the heaviness that's in your body. So really it's looking at your body where, it, where it's at and eating the foods of the opposite quality so you can regain balance. So Ayurveda is really focused on the digestion and it's much more focused on food than Chinese medicine is. Chinese medicine, they'll give you kind of general food guidelines, eat more warming, eat more cooling. Whereas Ayurveda will tell you what exact ingredients to eat and to avoid. And there are ingredients that you could never imagine. Like for example, we were talking about pitta, the fire dosha. Well, grapefruits are really bad for them. And you would think grapefruits really cooling. So in my book, and you can find, um, different lists of specific foods that are the best and worst. So if you're, if you have a digestive issue, but almost everything else comes from digestion. Like a friend of mine had really bad eczema. She was getting on her face and she went to an Ayurvedic practitioner. She did a panchakarma, the Ayurvedic detoxification process for five days and she's never had eczema again. If you have anything that could be related to the digestion, which is almost anything, you could visit an Ayurvedic practitioner. If you're looking for an acute pain somewhere, like your back hurts, this, that, or maybe you just need to get your endocrine system moving, then acupuncture could be really helpful for that. But they both work hand in hand and they overall suggest the same things. I think it's really hard for everyone because when we see practitioners, they're experts in one subject. There's not really just a practitioner that does everything. It's like, you're a Chinese medicine person, you're an Ayurvedic person, you're a functional person. So it's really hard to find someone who can meet you on all aspects because there's no everything wellness specialist. So we're kind of paving our own path. So what I noticed, and when I first started studying Ayurveda is I was always arguing with my Ayurveda teachers. I was like, this doesn't make sense. I learned that this scientifically is like not sound. And you know, cause a lot of these things are just very intuitive. For example, like um, in my nutrition training program, I learned that you shouldn't cook something and then blend it, like cook greens and then blend them. You should blend it first and then cook it. But it's like a really common Indian dish. It's like sog paneer. I don't know if you've had it like spinach curry and you, you pressure cook the spinach and then you blend it with the other stuff. And I'm like, well, why won't, don't you just do it the opposite? Cause then it can be more nutritionally sound. And they're like, no, this is how it's done. This is the way, like, there's no other way. And I was like, well, why don't you just change the order? It can preserve the nutrients. And they're like, do you want to learn Ayurveda or not? And I'm like, wait, this is just sounds like, like another set of rules and it doesn't really sound intuitive to me. So when people ask me all the time, like, oh, where'd you study Ayurveda? It's like, I can give you the places that I studied in India, but what I practice is nothing based off what I study. It's something that I just figured out on my own. And what I practice is going to be different from what anyone else practices. So that's why I don't make it about what I eat. It's not about that because what I eat changes so drastically every single day, but it's just giving you the tools that you need so you can notice in your body, like, Hey, I'm feeling really fiery. Maybe I need more cooling things. Hey, I'm feeling really earthy. I'm gaining weight. Maybe I need more lightness, more stimulation and just learning that language for little things that we already know about ourselves. But I think what's beautiful, about Ayurveda is it gives it language that we didn't have and then we can go about our lives and create it in any way possible whether it's Indian food Mexican food Thai food American food whatever else the only doctor that's ever helped me is one that I met 
maybe two or three weeks ago and she's a naturopathic doctor because it's very expensive to visit naturopathic doctors it's something insurances don't cover so i was like going my whole life to just like regular western doctors to you know get my physical and testing but it was almost like i didn't even bother telling them anything because i knew anything i told them they they wouldn't be able to meet me at because before when i told them i had digestive issues they're like oh you have ibs like take this pill so I really didn't have anyone until just recently I visited this naturopathic doctor and she suggested to me that I get tested for parasites being a raw vegan in India for two years and to check my cortisol levels just because I just wrote a book and I'm doing so many things and it's so beautiful to have that support and I wish that I wish that all doctors were like this so if you can't to anyone listening afford a naturopathic doctor an ND they go through the same training as medical doctors, but it's with a more natural approach. So they're still like, they can still order blood tests for you and things like that. And they, she sat down and asked me questions for like two and a half hours. And I was like, wow, this is like really what I've been missing my whole life. There are Ayurvedic doctors in India who've trained in India because Ayurveda is recognized as an actual health system there, whereas here it's not. So there's no, even if you are a natural, uh, an Ayurvedic doctor who studied in India here, you don't, you can't practice as a doctor. You could. I don't even think you could use that doctorate credential really it's just another system but there there definitely are doctors so here most of the time like what i am and what most of the time you visit are ayurvedic practitioners so they've gone through some sort of training about you know helping people with ayurveda mine is focused on nutrition just because i come from like a sports nutrition holistic nutrition background but some are specialists in you know panchakarma detoxification processes others are in ayurvedic herbs and massages there's so many facets of ayurveda that a practitioner could be an expert in so i think find one that's really working to what your needs are if you're looking for nutrition look for someone that has a nutrition background but um, if you can find an ayurvedic doctor from india who's here there are many there's you know dr vasant Lod, who's a very well-known author who has a center in new mexico there's Dr. Suhas, he is an amazing Ayurvedic doctor trained in India, so you can definitely find them, but your insurance isn't gonna cover it. I used to be the kind of person who'd eat out every single meal. I loved it, I loved going to restaurants, ordering things. It was like a way that you could go on dates. It's a social thing. And then once I started to really realize like, wow, their food's probably not organic. They probably didn't wash it, all of these things. I naturally just didn't want to eat out anymore. So now it's like, I'm fortunate in LA that there are organic restaurants like Cafe Gratitude and things like that. So if I eat out, I'll go somewhere that's like organic and plant-based, but it's like every few weeks. It's I try to make all of my own food myself, but um, but it's easy when you know about Ayurveda because a lot of it you can do in like a batch. Like you can just do like a batch of lentils and eat, eat those for a few days and then turn them into lentil burgers and then freeze those lentil burgers. And traditional Ayurveda would say, make all your food from scratch every single meal, every single day. But realistically, how many of us, you know, in India, there was a wife who stayed home all day and all she did was cook. So it was way easier for them to, the Ayurvedic practitioner doctor men to say, oh, someone needs to cook all your meal from scratch. Like in India, there's no concept of going out for lunch. Like you bring your home food. So it's a really different culture. So here I think, it's better for you to eat your own leftovers that you cooked yourself than to go buy something fresh from a restaurant, which probably isn't fresh anyways. And the amazing thing about Ayurveda is it's really affordable. Like if you go to a grocery store, the most expensive thing is going to be meat or, you know, cheese and things like that. But with Ayurveda, it's just like beans, super affordable, rice, and then local seasonal vegetables and just roast a bunch of them twice a week, make some lentils, make some quinoa or rice, and you're good. One of the easy things we can all do is to stop drinking iced water. Um, when you go to a restaurant, you sit down, they bring you iced water and it's just everywhere. We drink iced coffee, iced this, iced that. And Ayurveda views your digestion like a fire. So when you're putting ice on a fire, the fire is gonna go out. So instead of drinking anything iced, drink it at least room temperature, if not warm. I know you might be thinking it's so hot where I live or it's summer, I can't drink warm stuff. But that's what I thought too. And I realized India, it's like 110 degrees every day and they're eating warm food all the time and what happens when you eat cold food is your body has to expend so much energy that you think you're cooling down but all that energy is going to make you get even hotter and going to make you keep drinking that cold stuff so if you're drinking cold anything switch to room temperature even if you don't listen to anything else and you're gonna, your digestion is going to feel so much better which is going to impact everything else and if you live somewhere like along the equator like in south india or jamaica and stuff 
it's not going to matter as much because the same food's growing throughout the year. But if you live somewhere like New York where it's like drastically different, then your diet's gonna have to change drastically too. So it just, it really is dependent on the temperature because the season does change the temperature, but also the qualities within that temperature, like windiness versus wetness versus dryness. Like it could be a hundred degrees in Dubai and a hundred degrees in the Bahamas and your diet's gonna still be different because one's dry and one's humid. Also in, du in Dubai, the foods that grow there are like dates, stuff like that, that's going to help your body retain water. Whereas the foods in, Jamaica or Bahamas or like fruits that are going to make your body lose water. So just eat what's there, what's growing around you and like you're going to be good. Really the cornerstone of Ayurveda is you are not what you eat, but you are what you digest. And it doesn't matter how healthy something is, how many nutrients it's ha it has, if you're not digesting it, it's not going to do anything for you. So I think a lot of us get stuck on like, oh, well, kale's really good for you so i should eat all the kale or like this superfood's amazing for you and if your body's not actually like breaking it down and assimilating the nutrients and then releasing the toxins it's going to be harmful so i like to think of it like a banana peel like a banana is like you know it's a plant it's really clean but if you leave a banana peel in the car for a day your your car really starts to smell you leave it in there for like a week your your car is literally going to reek now let's say you leave that banana peel in there for a month. You go on vacation, that car is closed, it's 100 degrees in that car, and you, you open the door a month later, your car is never gonna smell good again. It's gonna be like entrenched in the seats and everything. We can think of our digestions the same way, you know? They're about 100 degrees, if not more. And if we're filling it up with foods that our body's not breaking down, it's gonna be like that banana peel, that even if it was kale, even if it was a banana, if it's sitting in our stomach, it's gonna turn into toxins. So instead, pay attention to how you're feeling. Like, whatever it is that you're eating, whether it's a salad or a smoothie or whatever else, Notice how you feel, not what anyone else says. If you're feeling like, wow, I feel tired, or wow, I feel bloated, or wow, I feel gassy, then something's going on. And maybe it's a little bit of time that you're gonna have to stick away from that, you can come back to it. Or maybe that food just wasn't meant for you. But the more in touch you are with yourself, the more you're going to become a, a radar, basically, and seeing like, this works, this doesn't, and it's not going to take you years and years and years of imbalance, which we've, we've all had to do to get here. But you're gonna be able to see, wow, coconut water, winter time, not working for me. So I just hope that everyone can just practice that level of self-awareness. And it doesn't come with just food, it's in everything. You know, if you're meditating, you're gonna be more aware in everything that you do. So that's why it's like such a lifestyle transition. Meditation is really, really important in Ayurveda because it's only when we meditate and we clear our minds can we open ourselves up to creative channels and flow and the things that we truly want to do because our minds are always chattering but our souls kind of know the direction and really central to ayurveda is that you're not your mind you're not your body we just have to balance those so you can get to the deeper layers of you your soul and that each soul has a purpose which is our dharma which is literally like the reason that you were put on this planet so you have to heal your body not you know when you're sick all you can think about is getting better heal your body but once you've healed your body then it's time to step up to like what's my dharma how am i here to serve and i think once you even get on that path even more healing happens without you you even trying because your body's like yes i'm doing what i was here to do it's really important to to be that example if we're not living in a state of wellness it doesn't matter how much we want to help others we have we have to be that example and i know what it's like to live in a family where no one wants to listen to you but once they see like wow like she's really feeling better like she has so much more energy and they notice the shift in your vibration that's naturally going to make them want to shift and as you continue in that shift and that like that evolution of consciousness you're naturally going to be inclined to share it and you're going to say hey you know what I want to start a blog. I want to start a podcast. I want to start a TV show. It's just naturally what happens to everyone when they get more well. You'll never find a blogger or wellness advocate who didn't need the healing themselves. So do that healing and it's going to be effortless. You're going to want to help others.